Okay, I thought I would take just a second and uh, before I start shrinking any of the uh, fabric on the cover, I thought I would kind of go over it. This is kind of what I was talking about. You know, I left the cup sit with the poly tack in it and the brush overnight. So you can, if I can do it with one hand, but look how this pulls out. It's hard with one hand, but ah. how about this? Anyway, it, that's how it comes out. And this is clean as can be. So you just throw all that in the trash. Okay, so the cover is completely installed. It took a few hours to do it. But, and again, the Cub Crafters video is, uh, is pretty darn good. Uh, everything in there i didn't have any any uh questions about you uh of course you're going to lay out just like they said lay the blanket out across here putting this center seam you can see here how you just want to center the seam on the top bar all the way to the top so uh we, we clamped it here glued it here glued it here so this is kind of the starting point is to get this corner in the right place so you clamp it, clamp it, and clamp it, glue it, and glue it, and then just uh, work your way up. Now in the uh, video, they show rolling it, you know, back and going rolling forward as you go. I actually found it's easier just to put it forward, and then this fabric is just hanging down. I just lift the fabric, put my hand underneath, lift the fabric up, put a little glue, and just set it right back down on it. That seems to be less messy and a little easier uh, to actually do than, than rolling that fabric all the way back. So just leave it out. The fabric's just hanging down here. Just get one hand up underneath it and just pick it up. Your other hand, you can put your glue along just the very top. And again, being careful, careful with the polytech to only put the glue just along the top. And then when you're pressing this, uh, down on here, Again, what you want to watch out for is don't, if you've gotten glue on the side of this top stringer and you start doing this and you glue the side to it, you know, this is at an angle, you know, this is, so it's only touching the very top of this stringer. And if you start gluing the sides of this down, then it looks like crap and you have to go back and melt it or get rid of it and pull that out. Like a, kind of like I showed you on the belly, the word, if you got too much glue on the side. So just put glue on the tops and then uh, be careful as you're going along. Do not let it, uh, don't let it come back in and stick in here. Make sure it's only sticking on the top and you've got a nice straight line all the way down through here. So we're just doing that top part like the video says, and we're coming along here. And when you get to the top, you're just gonna go to the end, you know, right here. And then of course your fabric is all across here. Come back up to the front, just like they show in the video, pull this excess just kind of look at it and uh, pull it up here, you know, pull the sides to where it kind of looks like it's kind of as straight and tight as it can be. Don't just wrap it up around here and pull it this way and get it lopsided. Again, pull it, pull it so it looks like it's all kind of nice. Just kind of pull it down here. You can almost clamp it here better, and which would give it a nice pull. Don't get it whacked up, you know, pull the bottom up here out of the way. So you're wanting to look at this right here. Um, and then it's just kind of simple uh, at that point to, you can, you uh, roll the, roll it over like this. And of course you're just going to, you know, do the same thing we talked about before. You're just gonna glue this edge to start with, just this edge. Don't get a lot of glue up here and don't let it stick to the tube back there. You only want it to stick to this part of the tube. So don't glob glue everywhere. Just put a little along this edge for now just to hold it in place. Until then you'll come back and like they show you, you'll cut an inch off and then come back and glue this to the bottom. So your seam is going to be on the bottom and you will see this seam again. So take your time and make a nice cut there. Even though we'll have a tape over this, the seam will still show through there just a little bit. So I still always try to make it as pretty as can be in case one day somebody looks up, gets on their back and crawls on your airplane and looks up at it, right. So that's something that's just for you. Anyway, look and kind of see how, you see how it'll be kind of baggy. And as you lay it over and, and start to pull the fabric back, I think when you start doing this edge, you do kind of like the video, 
come back over to this corner. This is kind of the important part is right here. Work it, or pull your fabric back this way where it looks like you're getting as much of the wrinkles out and down this way and it's nice and straight. And then the same thing here, pull it down this way, you know, so you're kind of getting it to this corner. And then glue this part right here, you know, right into here first, just to hold that in place. And then you can work back up and do, you know, this and then, and then just keep working your way down, pulling it, pulling it down and pulling it reasonably tight. But when you start jerking, like I said before, when you start trying to get this tight, you're going to end with a lot of wrinkles and a lot of ugly spots that you're going to have to iron out or live with because when you start pulling it out of shape and then you start wrinkling it down here, it, don't worry. All this is going to shrink completely out nice and tight. This is, this is absolutely normal as Mitch showed on the Cub Crafters video. So, and then again, this is going to be covered with a patch. I mean, with the tapes later, do the best you can right now with these joints here, but later when you put your, final tape across here that's what you're going to see so i spent a lot of time on my tapes making them real pretty uh edges around uh, all these spots here so just like the video shows you just continue working your way up here this is the the baggage door right here remember we put we put uh, about an inch or so i actually just put it across the carbon fiber part and across here and across here and then in a circle around here you pre-glue this this area here so you can see i haven't activated it yet with mek so the pre-glue is down there and i'm going to wait until i get a 250 degree shrink which i'm getting ready to do right now once i get it to 250 degrees which will kind of get the fabric wrinkles out and get it moved in position about where it's going to stay then i'll activate you know activate this around here and then i'll cut this out and then we'll proceed to glue this uh, around the baggage door and i've talked about this a good bit in my forum post also with pictures but you know you've got a flat spot spot here we're going to pre-glue this here then we're going to that's going to hold it with a 250 degree shrink and then there's a there's a then there's a lip the lip of the door sits right here right in there so what we're going to do then is come here and do it and glue after we cut a just kind of cut this out leaving a little extra to wrap around then we'll come back and we'll glue this down to the flat spot where the door lip is let that dry use your iron uh then to come back and, and turn the corner anytime i'm turning a corner like a 90 degree corner on a on a on a uh, fabric i use a uh, like a 250 to 300 degree iron and just make that bend it makes it so much easier uh so anyway for the recess part, just make sure you're getting it down in there good into the recess. Let that dry, come back, the fabric will be sticking up like this. Come back and we'll iron it, just, we'll just iron it flat over here, which gives it a nine degree. Then we'll come back and glue just the edge that goes this way. Let that dry, come back and take your iron, make it make the bend back towards the inside this way. Then, then we're gonna glue it and stuff it back behind, you know, wrap it around the back side of this door, okay? And that's going to uh, do it. And we'll have a patch on there too. And I'll come back later after we do the patches. Showing where we're putting the grommets and the patches in. So anyway, at this point, you know, we're going to wait. Wait until I do the shrink, which I'm getting ready to do. After I do the 250 degree shrink, I'm going to come back. Activate this with MEK. Then I'll go ahead and cut this out. Hard glue it. So I'm going to go all the way around this edge before we do the 350. When you do the 350, you want everything to be completely glued and finished and ready to go. Okay. So that's going to wait as we got up here towards the door just like in the video kind of started up here uh, a lot of people just wrap this around the inside and just glue it back in there which i i guess is pretty fine because i know a lot of people do that it looks a little neater here you're gonna have to come back later and kind of cut this out for your batteries and stuff but still i like to just go ahead and do it and i'll shrink this you know tight with the rest of the fabric and the boot cowl of course is going on over this so it won't matter it's not going to see it whatever <laughs> i think cup crasher still does this i think this way so uh, i did some fabric work with cup crafters at the fabric and this is the way cup crafters does it so just pull it up here all you're doing is trying to give additional support so when you put that 350 degree shrink you know a note too is that poly brush is also a type of a glue 
So after you poly, spray the poly brush and do all the poly brushing and putting the tapes and everything on, that is also a glue. It's going down and grabbing the poly tack. It's going to grab a hold of all these metal areas and places that it touches and glue it too. So this is kind of a temporary area. So after I'm done and the airplane is all poly brushed, poly tacked and painted, then I don't, I could care less. I come back here and I just cut this out because there's going to be a battery hanging down here and here's your ignition boxes and backup batteries and stuff and you'll just end up cutting this out most of it anyway or you can just cut it all out so either way you want to do it you can wrap it back around on the back side of the fabric spacer or you can just do like this and, and not worry about it i tend to go with the way cub crafters usually does it all right i talked about uh, a little bit about these attached fittings i glue it real well in the back but again when you put the struts come on here later this, unless they change something on the turnbuckles, these are gonna have to be actually almost ground down. All the uh, uh, car, uh, paint, powder coat's gonna have to come off. That fabric's gonna have to come off. So I don't get real crazy like they're gonna be to bring it way out here. You can if you want to, and then cut it back. But you can see I've got it back behind the holes. And later I'll have to take a razor blade after I'm painted and finished. And I'll cut it across there. Make sure the bottom side's the same way. Then I actually take a sander, a rotary sander like my Dremel tool, and I'll actually sand the areas down right where those turnbuckles or the forks are coming in off of the uh, struts to, to fit nicely into these strut, these attached fittings. You also want to make darn sure, I go over this in the, in the uh, forum post, make darn sure you've reamed these out, okay? Get the powder coat out of these, make sure you can easily slip, I believe it's a 3 8 bolts or ream it with the three eights and i'll do all these i ream 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 it all but you can ream these others pretty much at any time but after you get the gear on and you're you're over up and trying to put the struts on which are coming back down here you cannot get to these holes uh to ream them out and most of the time a three eighths bolt is not going to go through because of the powder coat so ream these now while it's easy without a gear being on uh, the first one I did, I didn't know that. And we were trying to put the strut in and I had all the problems with the forks wouldn't go in because of all this powder coat and all the fabric and glue and everything. On top of that, once we finally got it stuffed in there and ground down enough by hand, the bolt wouldn't go through because I hadn't reamed it. And there's no room, when you see the gear coming off here, there's no room to do anything. There's no way to get a drill. You can't do it from the top because of the angle. And I actually cut off a drill bit, a 3 8 drill bit about that long that I had enough room to stick it up there. And then I used a pair of vice grips and I would turn it like an eighth of a turn and just back. And I actually manually with vice grips had to ream these holes. And it was not fun. So be sure you're reaming those out now. Um, and use a good reamer and don't overdo it. So we come back over to here. And just like the video says, we did this and we came back. We cut across here. Some people like have said that they like to fabric this just to keep it the same texture as these. If you want to, fine. I did it once and didn't like it. So that paints up just fine. And we're making a straight cut across here. And so all you're gonna do then is just you see you coming across here, you're coming across the top of the fabric spacer, and you're just gonna come across here. When you get up to this point, I do the same thing. I lay the fabric over, and you'll find it so much nicer if you lay the fabric over it, use your hobby iron, and just come back in and lay this fabric down nice and flat with your fabric iron before you glue it, okay? So it doesn't have any of the wrinkles or anything as it lays flat. So make it nice and smooth with the hobby iron first, then pull it back quickly, put glue in there, and then, you know, work it back in. Again, just like he said also, this is where some good wet MEK comes in later. Don't put glue on top of this. That, it's going to be unsightly. Glue on top of the fabric, like I said before, just globs on top of it. It doesn't do any good. It's not holding it because it's not penetrating through the fabric because that glue has already clogged up the fabric holes. So rub it in good. Get a lot of glue. Do it quickly. This is a good time that you may even thin the poly tack out that you use here just a little bit with a little bit of MEK to make sure it's nice and thin. Don't use old poly tack that's dried out, which could happen in an hour, <laughs> you know. So do that and then get your wet rag MEK and you can get it fairly wet and just go ahead and rub it in 
until you get as many of the white spots out. Again, your hand is also gonna go on here for your door. You know, it's gonna cover a lot of this up too, so you're only gonna end up with a little bit of it that you're gonna actually see later because the hand is gonna cover it, but you still wanna make it as pretty as you can be because that's where you're gonna get in. And we're gonna, then it's gonna do the same thing. Then we're just gonna come across here and we're gonna just cut it off here somewhere. And then I take the iron after this is dried, I take the iron, like I said, and lay it over and just iron, just run quickly down this side and get that, it'll make that angle in there. It'll make the fabric stay flat, bring it back up, put glue on it, glue it to this front side, this face here. Let that dry and then I do the same thing. I take the iron again, I turn it sideways like this and I iron the fabric back in that direction before I try to tuck it, okay? Iron it back in that direction, come back, pull that edge back out glue it good and stuff it up in that track where the interior panel is going to end up going here and all around here and the same thing you know here so that's kind of the trick to trick to that and when you come back this is all straight scissor cut so come back and scissor. you have a you have this part right here because you're cutting at a 45 down to here with straight scissors because you don't want to see the edge so you do use a straight scissor cut when you do that and you use this over, you'll have this triangle where there's nothing. Just take your piece of fabric, lay it on there, trace it out, cut it with straight scissors, stick it in there. After we fill this with poly brush, when we're doing the poly brushing and everything, this, these little joints will go away. Plus you've already got the metal hinge that's gonna be coming down through anyway. So you really only end up with that little bit right there. The, uh, so you're coming up to here. You can see in the video, he did some little trick stuff here. Just a hole right there you wanna cover. Um, I wrap this, I actually go ahead and wrap this side here. I just cut a slot, stick the end in through here. And again, same thing, same thing here, going around the corner and in. When you get here, it doesn't really matter too much. I'll take my iron and work that, but just you do something, make sure you're covering that holes. There's not a hole done in there. Make sure you're open on this side where you can slide that uh, window. And later that D window will slide in here. And we, they talked about this before, you know, this is before we started cutting, cutting any of this. And then I just pulled the fabric up and tried to get it where I had the least amount of wrinkles in through here. So I pulled the fabric up to here, clamped it off to where it looked nice and it was as flat as could be. And then I took my MEK. This has only been activated by MEK on the pre-glued edges of the window frame like this, okay? So just like he says, you just razor blade this edge here. And then we're gonna cut this. I take cal I mean, I take my uh, compass and make it a little bit less than this. And then do the same thing. Take your iron, fold this fabric. You cut it up here, take the fabric, fold it over, iron it down here, iron it over here, bring it back up. Or right, well, as you got it laid over iron, then take your compass and measure a lesser distance from here to here. So you're a little bit less, but make sure you leave it plenty long. That makes a big difference, a lot of glue area. So make it a little bit shorter than from here to here on your compass. The fabric's laid over here, just run your compass down this side, get you a mark, cut it off with your pinking shears, you know, and then glue it up good. And just like he said, what kind of helps here is to let it, don't get in too big of a hurry here like you usually are. Just glue it a little bit, let it sit there. He said the 20 second rules, so yeah, just let it sit a little bit. And then you'll want to start you know, uh, putting it down in there. This uh, this is one I've used for a whole bunch. It's a little piece of uh, aluminum, just some aluminum I found somewhere. And uh, you can bend it back and forth. The trick is to keep this cleaned too, because the glue will get on here. Once the glue gets on here and you're trying to stick it in here, it grabs the glue down there. And so when you pull up, it pulls the fabric with it. So put it in there when it's wet and then come back and just keep clean. I keep a little specimen cup just of MEK handy on my table here. You gotta keep it covered or it'll evaporate up in no time at all. That's just MEK. A lot of times I just take it and I just dip that in it and get it wet and then we'll wipe it off with the rag. This is also a squeeze bottle of MEK. It works good because it's easy to squeeze a little bit on your rag or on the fabric if you get some glue. See, this is, it's just a squeeze, so it's not a pump. You can squeeze it. Keep that covered. MEK will keep as long as you keep it covered. If I didn't put a rag over there, probably in an hour that would be evaporated. So anyway, that's our little tool. This little piece of aluminum. 
So you can, now you've got glue on it, it's sticking up in the air, but you've already ironed it where it's wanting to lay over anyway. Then just take it, go in the middle, so, so you keep it evenly spaced, start in the middle, and just shove it, shove it down in there, and then just work your way all the way down, back and forth, get it all shoved in there. Then as the image, just quickly make sure you're keeping it pushed in like this. I, I go to the top, I go to the top like this, from the top edge, and I slide it and push it down. And what that does is grabs it and makes sure it's tight along this edge as you're doing it. So just keep, start at the top and slide it down, pushing the, that edge, you know, and the fabric down. And just keep working it back and forth. So you can look down in here just like I am and just keep working it back and forth. I think what would have been neat, kind of neat would have been if you had a piece of sheet metal or something, you could just slide it in there like the D window and just let it hold it but that's not a big deal. Just keep, just keep working it as it dries and then keep looking back on it, you know, for several minutes to make sure, you know, you're keeping it out of the way. It's not that big a deal. If it kind of pops loose a little bit, you still, your D windows will slide in, but you just want to make it look neat and see how nice and pretty that is all the way down through there. Same thing all the way up through here. Do it here. When you get to the top right here, same thing. We're just going to cut it with a razor blade to right there so we can slide the D window the window can slide back, you know, in at this point. Somehow or the other, I've actually got a piece of fabric in there. I need to, there you go, that got some glue. So your D window is gonna slide in, you know, here of course, and there. So then you're gonna take, come here, you're just gonna cut up and around this tube and then straight across from the hook holder like that. And then you're gonna cut it down. And at that point, it's where it's just gonna, you just put a little glue on this side glue it up there and then once it's hard, hard wrap it around there mark it cut it and wrap it underneath here same thing on the other side here we will have the seam here we'll be coming out here just cut that seam so you just got the seam itself but you'll have a little open spot right here then just glue that seam up to that part right there so i don't i don't and most people anymore i know don't actually do the covering in this area here okay this is where the extended baggage is. And the reason I don't, there's lots of times where I've taken a rifle case or a fishing rod case or something, and I've ran it from here all the way down through there, you know, instead of coming back up here over the pilot seat. So I really don't know why you would do that unless it's supposed to be some way to keep stuff from coming forward or something, I don't know. So I don't do it and a lot of people don't, don't cover that part. All right. And so you're doing, you're doing that there, uh, coming around, to the other side it's pretty much the same oh when you do well you saw this part so we're gonna before you do this up here you know we're gonna come back you got a tape line you got a tape line here put the same thing a little bit of the thinned out mek works good put a little bit of the wet poly tack along here and then lay it over you know first and the same thing will happen on this side so that when you're doing it you're gonna go here first, you're gonna come over here and put a line of glue here. Then the same thing here, you got this line of glue across here. And you see how loose all this is? It'll tighten up like a drum, no problem. So don't don't worry about it. When you start trying to get this all tight as could be, you're gonna end up with a bunch of wrinkles and stuff up here, right here. The biggest thing is where your glue lines are, try to have them where the glue is actually touching as nice and wrinkle-free as, as possible. See here, this is starting to, that's really just kind of a more of an iron out wrinkle, that'll iron out. But where your glue lines are, you want them to be flat and wrinkle free because that's harder to get out. All this will just shrink right out here. So so I think it's pretty much uh, pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. You go, go across here, you can do the same thing here, same thing here, same thing there. So then once you get to this phase, like I say, I'm gonna do a 250 degree shrink on it right now and uh, work on the baggage door. Once that's done, of course the bottoms are all done, so it's all tight, 350, and we're done and ready to put uh, grommets and uh, patches on. I'll come back then.